Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're having a good day, and if not, I hope I can make it a little better. Paper Chase has given me £50, which is around 60 US dollars, to do a spring spree in one of their shops. So here I am showing you the new Blue Water shop. If you guys don't know, Paper Chase specialises in stationery, but they also sell some art goods. So I thought I'd see what items I can get to do an art haul. The first item I was looking for was a new eraser, as I've already used the one that came with the mechanical pencil they sent me. Ooh, brush pens! <laughs> what an interesting choice of colours! I've got to try those. These are erasers with pencil sharpeners combined. How cool! They come in pastel too. Ah, the Agenzio section. That's their notebook range. I'm an ambassador for it. so holographic they have all sorts of washi tape too this one has planner labels on it how useful if you can't be bothered to write them out every day i think i might get some Ah, a wall of art supplies. Let's take a closer look. I am so excited to show you everything I've got. Uh, and I've even got my pink Agenzio here ready so that we can swatch in it. Firstly, I just want to show you some cards that I got because they were like too cute to miss. Um, here's a postcard with hang in there and a, a kitty in a um, hanging basket, a plant hanging basket. This is for my pen pal. Uh, it's for his birthday. He doesn't like to be reminded of his birthday. So I just send him a non-birthday related thing. <laughs> around the same time as my mother's birthday so I've got her this pop-up birthday card of the greenhouse it's very cute <laughs> and a mother's day card as well because her birthday and mother's day always happen to fall in the same week but now let's get to the bit that you're interested in the art stuff 
So in the end, the pencil sharpener eraser I went for was this one, which I don't think I showed in the video, um, but it's just like, it's ombre coloured <laughs> instead of metallic, and it was just so cute. So here it is with the lid off, here's the eraser, and you can replace it with another Milan eraser when you've used it all up. And here is the end, and look, it's double, this one, so you can do big pencils and small pencils. And oop, it's a very tiny little area to store your pencil shavings. Uh, I feel it's only right to practice with it, see if it works. Okay, right. None of my pencils are particularly blunt, but um, let's see how we can do. So we just flip it up, fit it in. And oh, look at that! So that's what a sharp pencil looks like. <laughs> I'd forgotten. <laughs> and the shavings will be. Yes, the brush tip markers in the interesting color palette. Not a color palette I would have chosen. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I was really curious to see how they go on, whether they look like their lids, if they're brushy brushy. Ah, let's find out. So I have pre-written a swatch page. I always do my swatching at the back of my book. I'm just putting a piece of scrap paper underneath my page because I don't know how many of these pens will go through into the other side of the paper and I don't want to stain the next page. Right, let's have a look at them. So this is what one looks like. It doesn't have the color name on it. And then here is the nib. I mean, it looks, it looks quite pointy. I think there's only one way to find out how they work do a swatchy swatch. <laughs> okay. Can I get a fine? Okay. <laughs> it's quite, I mean that's the black. I'd say it's more grey, but <laughs> don't hate it. Don't hate it. They kind of feel like felt tips up with a brush nib. Ooh. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it like a, a brushy brushy nib. I'd say it's more just a pointy nib. It does it doesn't really um, bend. I'd say it's more just a fine point. Um, I feel like these are water-based as well. Oh, that's a nice purple. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> so here they are. And let's see if they go through the paper. No, they don't. So that is a tick. You can use these in your Agenzio. That's nice. That's good, I like that. Um, right. Let's see what's next. <laughs> don't think I showed these in the video. These are called outline markers <laughs> and it's a six pack. It says colored slash silver inks. So maybe you know what's going to happen here. Uh, I feel like I'm going to hold it, keep it a secret and you'll see what happens when I use them. So let's write this down. Outline marker pens. So this is how they look. Once again, they just have a coloured lid. They don't actually say what the colour is. And, oh, I think I might need to pump these. It looks like they might be paint pens. Let's have a quick look. Okay, these need pumping. <laughs> uh, let's see how quickly they pump. Oh, here we go. So what is supposed to happen is each marker is silver, but with a coloured outline. Oh, I just noticed there's like two purples. 
see what the difference is. Oh wow! That's more like a pink. So that's a pink rather than a purple. <laughs> so that's going to be confusing. There we go. Those are the outline pens. I mean, quite a luminous orange. Purple, pink, not purple, like the lid suggests. Uh, sort of a, a warm red, blue, and I think that's quite a luminous green hiding under the silver. Let's see if they go through the paper. I don't have good hopes for these. Yeah, they go through. <laughs> so they're, they're pretty, uh, be aware that they go through. <laughs> Let's see what I've got next. I can't remember if I showed these or not. These are dual ended liners, fine tip and brush tip. And they are watercolor pens as well. So I'm not gonna do them as watercolor pens on this paper because the paper won't stand up to it. So I'll have to use those another day for that. But here's what they look like. There's just a little band to say that they're yellow. It doesn't actually say the color on them again. But this is the fine end. And this is ooh, the brush end. And I have to say, it does look a bit more brushy than those brush ones. So. Okay, let's have a go. So that's the fine line, the, the fine line. Uh, it's not the finest line I've ever seen, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but let's see about the brush. Oh, oh, that is nice. Oh, that is a proper brush tip, that. Ooh, I'm gonna enjoy using those. Okay, let's swatch the rest. Okay, these are amazing. I absolutely love these. I recommend, recommend, recommend. I'm absolutely going to do a video with them to test how watercolory they are in another video. Please let me know if you want to see that. But I think if you like Kurataki watercolor pens, if you like the Albrecht Duo watercolor markers, but like you can't bring yourself to split with the amount of money it costs to get them, these are a good dupe so far, I would say. They're really, really nice. I cannot wait to use them. <laughs> okay, let's see what I've got next. <laughs> We've got some pretend alcohol markers, which I think might actually be watercolor, <laughs> water based. Um, it's a 24 pack, dual ended. It says colored inks. We'll see whether, yeah, whether they are alcohol or whether they are water based. You get a chisel and a round tip. And this whole box was just £13. Let's see if they're any good. They come in a nice little carry case. Ugh. Oh, that's nice. Let me, let me do that again for you. Oh, that is very nice. Oh, and already you can see that these bad boys have names and numbers. I never know what the numbers are referencing, like whether there's like a universal number guide or whether it's like Paper Chase's own number guide. <laughs> but let's see, we've got black, black grey, blue grey, grey, dark brown, brown, navy blue, light blue, sky blue, ultramarine. Interesting that they've called that ultramarine. I think that's quite purplish, so we'll have to see whether it's true to the colour on the plastic. Purple, magenta, dark green, dark olive, pale green, light yellow, yellow. I, I barely see any difference between these two, so it'll be interesting to see 
how these look when actually swatched. Light orange, pink, peach red, which looks pretty magenta to me. Red, deep red, which is the plastic anyway, paler than red. <laughs> Golden and orange, which are very similar in color. So I do get the feeling these are not gonna swatch like the plastics. So only one way to find out. Yeah, so these were just called dual ended marker pens. <laughs> okay, so this is what one looks like. We've got a little grippy pattern on both sides of the lids. They're triangular, it says which one's fine and which one's broad. That's always nice. Uh, that's the fine point. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Gee whiz, I can't get it back on. Wow. <laughs> and ugh. <laughs> That's the broad or the chisel nib. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, that is tight. These, oh, and you can tell the difference. There's a little gray line there, but blimey, that's tight. <laughs> okay. Let's watch. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a nice black. That is definitely a. Oh my goodness! Ugh. Black. And... Oh, that's got good coverage, but yeah. <laughs> Let's. Wow, these are a workout. <laughs> Let's see if they go through the paper. That will help us determine whether they're water-based or whether they're. Ooh alcohol based oh they're going through the paper so they could actually be alcohol based um we just compare them these are water based and you see they're not going through the paper this one is so they could actually be alcohol based in which case i am very impressed that they managed to produce alcohol markers for 13 pounds okay let's uh, get swatching Okay, so here they are all swatched and I can confirm that they are alcohol markers. They have the alcohol marker smell. They go through the paper, <laughs> which is definitely a sign of alcohol markers. So I wouldn't recommend using them in Urgenzio unless you're happy to have blank pages. Um, but you know what? Alcohol markers go for nearly all paper. It's not unique to the Agenzio. It's just, it's what alcohol markers do. They are actually quite accurate to their um, lids. So like, red is somehow darker than deep red. <laughs> I was surprised at. <laughs> I really did think it would be the other way around. And if you can see the difference between light yellow and yellow, well done you. <laughs> <laughs> that is impressive <laughs> i would say light yellow is maybe like a, the shade 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 lighter like one percent lighter is i i guess they had to fill the pack they didn't decide to 
use a colourless blender or something. <laughs> I'd say my favourite colour is actually peach red. I just, I like that. Um, but they are alcohol markers. So shall we have a go at seeing if they layer and blend very quickly just in this little patch here? So let's, um, I'm going to use peach red, my, my favourite. Let's just see, um, will they layer? Yeah, you can get them to go a little bit darker. Okay, let's have a go at blending. Um, could try blending some colours that shouldn't really go together. That's always a, a fun test. Let's, I know, let's try blending pink. This pink is quite a bit lighter than the peach red. So let's see how that goes. I think we know how it's going to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that. <laughs> <laughs> so they only, they only blend with similar colours, which is fair. That's a nice blend anyway. That rah, We knew that was going to happen. Okay, and we'll do the last test, which is the layering test. Let's pick a blue. One thing I will say is they come out really intense. So only real pastel colors is like the light orange and the pink <laughs> i like the two pastel colors so if you're looking for like light colors you're not going to get it out of these uh, yeah let's do this this is light yellow <laughs> oh look at that oh that's a nice green okay and we'll go with red That is unexpected and I like it. Okay, we have to do another video of these, I think, just using these guys. Please let me know if you'd like to see that. I'm quite excited to see what they can do. Next, I don't think I featured these in the video. I think I saw them after I finished recording. These are mixed shape labels, circle and star shape. Um, if I can get them out. Basically, they're pastel. There we go. <laughs> I've got one more item. Can you remember what it was? These I'm very excited about on the basis that they could be revolutionary in my attempts at doing journaling. <laughs> Let's get them open. They're washi tape. You get eight of them. And, oh, got different journaling oh excuse me they've got different journaling thingies on them oh my gosh i don't even know what they're called uh, i think these are month ones i think we'll swatch them in a minute these are days uh this is time what else have we got clap done woo tick yay <laughs> Oh, nice. Uh, these are just pretty patterns, so they'd make great dividers. Uh, memo, note, plan, idea, I think that says. Got another divider, adorable. And these are the days, it looks like. Okay, I've never swatched washi tape before.
So there are all eight tapes and oh, they're so gorgeous. I just, I love the pastel color scheme of them. <sighs> Should we tidy this mess up and actually do something with them? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> What's this? I hear you cry? But Rachel, you already did your goals in the last video. <laughs> they were art goals. These are my general life goals. But don't worry, once again, they're just small, easy to reach goals, rather than something large and impossible for me to do right now. I really recommend setting easy to reach goals if you plan on setting goals, as that way you have a feeling of empowerment every time you do one, and you get one step closer to reaching that bigger goal later on in life. For example, instead of setting a goal, I want to become a published author, first maybe set a goal, I want to write the outline of a story I want to write. Then you can set another goal, I want to write the first chapter of that story I want to write. See, they're much more easy to achieve than trying to be an author overnight. <laughs> and this is my book goal so basically i really love buying books and people love to buy books for me but i always forget to read them so i've set myself the goal of reading a book a month because i don't even have to buy any this year to complete that goal i just need to read the books i already have it's a win-win situation
This is what I managed to do with the items I got from my spring paper chase haul. What do you think? <laughs> I mostly like it. I mean, I'm a little bit like, mm, this bit looks kind of ugly right now, but maybe it'll look better when I start filling it in. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed using these and I'm definitely going to do a video with them just by themselves because I felt like I was only just getting the hang of using them by the time I'd finish this and I think they'll make some really nice art so look forward to that in the future and uh, yeah so thank you for making it to the end of the video with me I'd love to know what your favorite part was if you could leave a comment in the comment section below I mean I used so many things I'd love to know if there was anything in particular that you'd like to use now after seeing them featured and if there's anything you'd like to see me explore further out of all the items I used if you could like, subscribe, turn on all notifications, share this video, and leave a comment, that would all be amazing. You can find me at Enchanted Violin on Instagram and TikTok, links will be in the description box below, as well as links to my online comic companions. And I'll see you next week for something new.